Fatty acids. Really quickly, your brain is mostly made up of fat. Did you know that? Your brain is 60% fat by dry weight. So if somebody calls you a fat head, <laughs> they, are, they are speaking. They are factually correct. Uh, you are, and so am I. Maybe they're paying you a compliment. I'm, I'm not sure. Probably not. There are two types of fats that your body cannot make. Most kinds of fat that are in your brain, your body can make, but there are two kinds that it cannot make. They're called omega-3s and omega-6s. They're called essential fatty acids. Why essential? Because they have to come from your diet. You can't make them. They're both critical for proper brain function, omega-3s and omega-6s. They're both critical for regulating inflammation. They play complementary roles in the body. Generally speaking, <laughs> omega-6s build inflammatory hormones. Omega-3s build anti-inflammatory hormones. In the ancestral diet, people, our ancestors ate omega-3s and omega-6s at a ratio somewhere between 1 to 1 and 2 to 1. The optimal ratio, when we put 6 first, the optimal ratio is roughly 2 to 1. If we did a blood draw, on you or I, and, and we wanted to know in advance, what should we be looking for for an omega-6, omega-3 ratio? We're going to do a blood test, about 2 to 1. In the brain, it's about 1 to 1, but in the blood, it's about 2 to 1. Now, modern American diet, unfortunately, can you see this? If you can, I'll, I'll tell it to you. 20 to 1. We need 2 to 1. It's 20 to 1. Why? What in the world is going on? By the way, this is not good. The 20, that's on the side of inflammation. The 1 is on the side of anti-inflammation. Okay, omega-3s are mainly found in grasses, plants, algae, and the animals that eat them. Grasses, plants, algae, and the animals that eat them. Well, we can't eat grasses or plants. We usually don't encounter algae. So our best bet is eating the animals that eat them. Okay, omega-6s come from vegetable fats. They come from basically seeds and grains and the animals that eat them. So, hmm, corn oil, <coughs> cottonseed oil, you see it, linseed oil, all, basically, almost all the oils that are used in virtually every type of fast food, in virtually every type of processed food, oh, but wait, it gets better, our meat supply. If you went back in time 150 years ago, or even 100 years ago, and had a piece of beef, what did it feed on? Grass. Grass and leafy plants that were out in the pasture. Oh, and insects, which were eating grass and leafy plants out in the pasture, so they were chock full of them. Oh, uh, insects are actually a really good source of omega-3s. I'm not willing to start eating them anytime soon. But just, you know, just in case anybody's curious. Um, what do our cattle and uh, poultry? Corn. Corn, grains, right? In fact, their, their stomachs are not even designed to eat corn. Do you know what happens if, if, a, if, a, if a typical garden issued, garden variety cow starts eating a bunch of corn? First of all, it's going to turn up its nose at it unless you pump it full of growth hormones to make it freakishly hungry. Now it wants to eat the corn because it's so hungry, but then the corn turns its stomach so acidic that it becomes a seething cauldron of bacterial growth. So we need to pump it full of antibiotics so that it won't die of a systemic bacterial infection. See the issue? But it grows really fast if we do all of, all of the above, and so it's really profitable to do it that way. And it's not good for us. It doesn't take rocket science to figure out that that's probably, intuitively we sort of get, that's probably not the best way that we should be taking in meat. And yet that's the way we all do it. And so what's the result? An extraordinary imbalance. This is just historic trends in fatty acid consumption in the US, omega-6s, omega-3s. And notice that by the time we get to the year 2000, whopping imbalance. Well, guess what? We have an epidemic of inflammation as a result of this imbalance, and as I mentioned earlier, depression is an inflammatory illness. In countries across the world where they do not have this imbalance in omega-6, omega-3 dietary intake, they do not have the same epidemic of depression. The rates of depression are considerably lower. It gets better than that. 
when we take depressed patients and supplement them with omega-3 supplements found in, for example, fish oil, it's a, usually the most convenient source, we see a robust antidepressant effect. Now some of you might have, how many of you have seen a news story at some point on something about omega-3s or fish oil for depression? How many of you have heard about this finding? Okay, now I've got to ask and, and be honest. How many of you have ever seen a news story that said, well, there's some controversy about that, or maybe there was a finding or two where they didn't see the result? How many of you have seen that finding? Okay, N fewer, thankfully. Um, it, it is true, there have been some, some findings that did not see the effect, and you know why? I'm going to explain why right now. And this is a little bit of deep inside baseball, but hopefully it'll, it'll be useful information. There are three different kinds of omega-3s. There's one, if you're a vegetarian, you, you might say, well, wait a minute, there are vegetarian sources of omega-3s like flaxseed oil, have you heard of that, or walnuts. They're a source of a very short molecule called ALA. This is not anti-inflammatory particularly. It's a little anti-inflammatory. But the one that's really the building block of anti-inflammatory hormones is EPA. That's a medium-sized one. And then there's DHA. That's the longest one. That's DHA is the building block of brain tissue in the developing fetus and in a newborn in a small child. Kids need lots of DHA. Have you ever heard of infant formula supplemented with omega-3s? That's what they supplement with, DHA. Unfortunately, DHA is not antidepressant. So when you look at research trials where they've given depressed patients DHA, those are the, the null findings. Those are the findings where they're like, ah, it didn't work so well. When you look at the studies where they gave EPA, especially in high quality supplement with, with sufficient antioxidants, they typically, oh boy, they typically have an antidepressant. We're not going to go through this. This just is a really nice way of showing that all of these hormones here are built by EPA. These are anti-inflammatory. Um, these on this side are omega-6s, and these are all inflammatory hormones that are built. Um, that's all I'm going to say about that. Now, antidepressant dose of omega-3s. If you're going to get omega-3s, how much do you need? The best research evidence suggests that it's the starting dose is 1,000 milligrams per day of EPA. Now, I like to see patients take DHA as well. It comes along for the ride if you get it in a natural fish oil source. Does that make sense? I want you to have it in the way it's found in nature. Why? Because it, there's some evidence that it kind, of, it kind of freaks out the brain a little bit when it's only seeing EPA and not any DHA. Um, it taxes some of the enzymes that are involved and, and it's, just, it's not an easy thing for the body necessarily to, to just get pure EPA. At least that's the way I read the research evidence on this. So we like our patients to get 1,000 milligrams per day of EPA to start. Some people benefit from 2,000. So if we're not seeing any sort of effect, any sort of benefit on any level after a couple weeks on 1,000, we'll often bump it up to 2,000. Now, um, actually I'm gonna shoot ahead to, here we go. I, if you look at the side of a bottle of fish oil supplement, omega-3 supplement, you will see um, Something like this. It says omega-3 fatty acids, 500 milligrams, but you have to look at the fine print. How much EPA? This one says 300. So notice that even though the capsule, by the way, it's, it's even more complicated than this because there'll be something that'll say one capsule equals, it'll be 1,000 milligrams per capsule of something. And people say, oh, I was supposed to take 1,000 and this capsule has 1,000, so I should take one capsule. The, the kind of fish oil that you would buy at a typical drugstore would have 180 milligrams of EPA. If you do the math on that, if you can do it in your head, that means six capsules to get an antidepressant dose. Actually, six to 12 to get an antidepressant dose. I cannot tell you how many literally, literally over 100 different individuals have come up to me after a talk and said, Dr. Lardy, I tried taking uh, omega-3 and it didn't work for me. I said, oh, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, do you mind if I ask, you know, what brand, what dose? And they'll say, well, just the kind I got at the drugstore, and um, I just, you know, it said serving size one. Yeah. I took the serving size. Now, I'm a polite guy most of the time. So my little thought bubble is, is like, oh, you know, congratulations, you've just taken one-sixth of an antidepressant dose. I'm not shocked that it didn't work. But what I say is, I'm afraid you didn't have an antidepressant dose. Um, it might be worth trying, trying it again at a higher dose. And uh, several individuals have then gone back taken it at a higher dose and reported that it actually is beneficial at a higher dose. Now, potential side effects, oops, um, there we go. Potential side effects, 
if you get a low grade, a low quality fish oil, have any of you ever had indigestion or, God forbid, nasty fishy burps? That's what we call them in the business. Now, you know, how many of you have ever had nasty fishy burps at some point from a... That's a sign that you have just ingested a capsule of semi-rancid fish oil. And after your digestive juices in your stomach made their way through that outer gel coating, they spilled this nasty rancid fish oil into your stomach. No wonder that you're burping that back up. By the way, just in case you were wondering, if it's semi-rancid, it is not psychoactive. It is not able to have the anti-inflammatory benefit that your brain and body need. What does that suggest? You really would benefit from a higher quality grade of fish oil. Now, the really good news is there are some very high quality supplements available for very low price now. Supply and demand have finally caught up on the fish oil front.